going to talk about AFib now. I'm, I'm the electrophysiologist, as, as you heard, and AFib is an epidemic in this country driven mainly by poor diet and uh, physical inactivity. Um, in AFib, the top chamber of the heart is not squeezing. It's just quivering or fibrillating, as you can see on the picture on, on your left. Um, AFib is increasingly common with 6 million people currently diagnosed, a number that's going to double in the next couple of decades. It's thought that about 25% of people over the age of 40 are going to have some experience with AFib. AFib increases with age, high blood pressure, obesity, sleep apnea, excessive alcohol, and excessive exercise. As Dr. Goyle mentioned, there is too much. That's not most people. Most people, it's too little. But if you're running more than 25 miles a week, back it off a little bit. So in terms of diagnosing AFib, there has been a tremendous evolution uh, over the last several decades. Now, the 12 lead EKG is an eight second heart monitor. And we've had a lot of problems in the past where a doctor does an EKG and says, hey, you don't have AFib anymore. You're cured. Uh, and just because you didn't have it during those eight seconds by no means means that you don't have AFib. AFib notoriously comes and goes. It can be very sneaky. We see people that have palpitations for years. They're told it's an anxiety disorder. They're told they're crazy or, or whatever. And if you look hard enough, often you find the real problem. Um, and so as you see in the picture here, there's the evolution. The EKG is an eight second monitor. There's something called an halter monitor, generally 24 hour monitor moving on event recorders, little boxes with wires people wear around their necks. Well, the latest and greatest here is now the implantable loop recorder. It's a piece of metal the size of a paper clip, gets injected under the skin, takes a minute to put in, and it will record every single heartbeat you have for the next three to four years. If your heart does something it's not supposed to do, it has a transmitter, it will call us and tell on you. So Big Brother is watching. This is where we are right now. And the, here's an example of a patient that had AFib on their loop recorder. You see the black lines represent AFib. They had an ablation of AFib. We were real happy. They felt wonderful. What you see there is about a year after their procedure, they were having AFib. It was very little, but it's important to know because they are at risk for stroke, which we're going to talk about. And if we just relied on that eight-second monitor when they show up in our office, we would say, hey, you're cured. You don't need blood thinners or whatnot. And that's not the case. It's nice to have all this information. And so in the marketing campaign, your doctor is always with you. You're on vacation. He's right there, as you see him sitting next to you there. Uh, OK, so once we make the diagnosis of AFib, we have two issues. One is protect from stroke. You're not allowed to have a stroke. That's the worst, most scary thing. I think more people raised their hand when Dr. Royal said stroke than anything else. Secondary is treating symptoms. You want to feel good. So what's the story with the brain here? Well, it turns out that during AFib, blood clots can form in the heart. If a blood clot forms in the heart, it can break off into the circulation, lodge into a blood vessel that goes to your brain, and that's a stroke. So you can see this. This is a clot that formed in this pouch of tissue on the side of the heart called the left atrial appendage. And again, that breaks off and causes a stroke. These are big holes of brain tissue that are caused by strokes. The mainstay of treatment for the last 60 years has been rat poison. I mean, warfarin. You've, you've heard of this medication, and uh, that's how it was originally marketed. Nobody wants to take this medicine but it reduces the risk of stroke by about 70%. The majority of people that should be on it are not. Thankfully, beginning in 2010, we have the new blood thinners. You've seen Jerry West on TV recommending them to you. Xarelto, Eliquis, Pradaxa, Cervesa, and they are better than Coumadin. They're better than Warfarin. They're safer than Warfarin. They're still a blood thinner. You're still at risk for bleeding. You don't want to take them forever. We're going to recommend you take them forever if you've had AFib. And on behalf of us, I apologize, um, because strokes are really bad. And so now we're focusing our attention on local therapy. So I showed you the appendage where that clot formed on that ultrasound. So your question is, I'm thinning all of the blood in my entire body 
because you don't want a blood clot to form in one place of my heart. It's a systemic treatment of a focal problem. And so what we do now is there's this piece of tissue on the side of the heart called the appendage, like the appendix in your belly. It serves no purpose after your heart develops in the womb and you're born. And what we now know is the blood clots that cause strokes in AFib form here. And if you can't take blood thinners forever, we can plug up this tissue with what's called a watchman. You insert the plug, 45 days later, if the occlusion is there, you don't need the blood thinners anymore. With at one year, the same risk as if you were taking blood thinners, at five years, superior survival because you weren't exposed to blood thinners for those additional uh, four years. So this is where we are in 2017. Here's a few pictures, and again, you have this hole in the heart where the pouch is. After a few months, the body heals over, effectively closing the door to the appendage, no longer needing blood thinners. 40% reduction in stroke, systemic embolism, and death. Um, good things. Lastly, just about the symptoms of AFib, we have medicines. They don't work very well. Uh, thankfully, in the late 90s, uh, the smart French uh, doctor, Hasegera, figured out that AFib tends to come from these veins in the back of the left atrium. You see the muscle bundles in those veins. And so what we do is we electrically isolate those veins from the heart, classically done with this point catheter. The point catheter has gotten better. Thankfully, we now have a force sensor on the tip. We know if we're pushing against the heart, we know if we're pushing too hard. So things have gotten better, although at this point, the data supports the cryo balloon as the uh, safest, quickest, most effective way of completely isolating these veins by actually drawing a circle that takes about three minutes per vein to electrically isolate them, eliminating AFib. And probably about 80% of people. It's not perfect. Mm -hmm. The blood thinners are still recommended. Um, and so in conclusion, with AFib, very common, again, 6 million people, many more to come. We make the diagnosis, loop recorder, very useful. We protect from stroke. If the medicines are giving you troubles, we have the watchman appendage plug and getting rid of the AFib with the uh, cryo balloon. And I'll, I'll wrap it up there. <laughs>